Hello everyone, this is Mother Abby Murphy. I am um, bringing you our uh, Sunday services from my home amid the, co uh, the coronavirus and um, we've been asked not to be in our church buildings and so um, just so you know, if you hear some uh, meowing, my cat has decided to join me and uh, uh, he, may, he may make some comments occasionally. I want to start with announcements um, because then we'll have those out of the way. If you are watching this video, please comment below so that we will know approximately how many of you there are uh, with us here today, how many of you have attended church in this way. Um, because we are not able to be in our churches, we are now videoing just uh, one service, and so it's going to be a joint service between St. Thomas's and St. Elizabeth's uh, churches. Um, we will include the prayers of both of these churches together because as being yoked parishes, we have been, uh, we have learned how to worship together on occasion as well. We believe that we have found a way to safely keep our uh, paper pantry ministry open, which is only once a month, but we will still need your donations of the basic items. And so let me just give you a quick rundown of the very basics that we will be uh, needing and giving out. We need, for any, any of you who can find them, we need bathroom tissue, tissue, but they must be individually wrapped rolls. We need facial tissues, paper towels, again, individually wrapped rolls, shampoo and conditioner, liquid hand soap, toothpaste, dishwashing liquid, and any sort of disinfectants that you can find. And so if you have any of these items that you can donate, uh, please bring them to uh, the porch of the rectory at St. Elizabeth's. That would be 191 um, uh, Tulip Avenue, sorry, 191 Tulip Avenue um, on, in Floral Park. There's a porch, and if you put them in a bag, even if it's a garbage bag or something like that, a plastic bag, um, and leave them on the porch, we will disinfect before we take them in, and we will disinfect again before we give them out, and uh, hopefully we will be able to do this. We will uh, not be um, taking any people into the uh, rectory. We will give out our items uh, through a window, actually, on the porch. All right. Um, also, I just want uh, to keep uh, reminding you that in order to pay our bills and pay our staff, we need your tithes and offerings. And so one way that you can do that now, it, besides mailing them directly to the churches uh, in check form, is to go to paypal.me, M-E, paypal.me, and uh, for St. Elizabeth's, then it will be slash ST Elizabeth FP. Uh, and that is not um, um, sensitive, uh, case sensitive. Uh, and for St. Thomas's, it will be slash ST Thomas Belrose. And uh, again, not case sensitive. Um, but Roy is going to put a, a link on the bottom of this uh, video. So, uh, be on the lookout for that. All right, and I think that's all of our all of our announcements. And so, if you will all just center yourselves for a moment now, if you have a book of common prayer before you, you may uh, pull it out and uh, go to page seventy nine. If you don't, um, I. Uh, I just like to let you know that if you go to churchpublishing.org, uh, they have a PDF file now that you can download any part or all of the Book of Common Prayer and have that for your own personal use as well. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things which are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence as we are able. 
and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Together we say, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Our psalm for today is Psalm 130. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore, you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchman for the morning. More than watchman for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A lesson from the letter to the Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit of life, I'm sorry, I should have said, I should have started with the first reading, which is a lesson from the book of Ezekiel. All right. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out of the spirit of, brought me out by the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. 
There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to the mortal, Can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and I prophesied as I prophesied. Suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon those slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves, and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place on you your own soul. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think this is wrong. This is the first song of Isaiah, Canticle 9. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, 
but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A Song of Praise, Canticle 13. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy temple. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped her, his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world, but those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is not dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go also, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews, who had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? 
She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. When she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha and her sis the sister of the dead man said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If you are standing by any chance, please be seated. So, there's an old Yiddish folk tale about a well-to-do gentleman of leisure. He was very interested in the Hebrew scriptures, and one day he visited a wise rabbi to ask him a question. He said, I think I grasp the sense and meaning of these writings, except for one thing. I cannot understand how we can be expected to give God thanks for our troubles. Well, the rabbi knew instantly that he could not explain with mere words. He said to the gentleman, if you wish to understand this, you will have to visit Isaac, the water carrier. Well, the gentleman was mystified by this answer, but knowing the rabbi to be very wise, he crossed to a poor section of the settlement, and he found Isaac, the water carrier, an old man who had been engaged in mean, lowly, back-breaking labor for some 50 years. The gentleman explained the reason for his visit. Isaac paused from his labors, and finally, after several minutes of silence, looking baffled, Isaac spoke. I know that the rabbi is the wisest of men, but I cannot understand why he would send you to me with that question. I can't answer it because I've had nothing but wonderful things happen to me my whole life long. I thank God every morning and every night for all his many blessings on me and on my family. So, here we are in the fifth Sunday in Lent. Some of us have made Lenten disciplines that we have tried to continue to keep throughout our concerns and confinements. Some of us have found it impossible to keep our Lenten disciplines and so have, in fact, given up those disciplines for Lent. And a few of you may recall that I have said frequently, that 17 years ago, I gave up Lent for Lent. That was the year my husband Roy and I took a leave of absence from work and traveled to China to receive the blessing of a daughter and a new lifelong discipline for us, that of being parents. It happens that my last day 
uh, of working that year was Ash Wednesday, and my first day back was Palm Sunday. What a difference. <laughs> what a very different sort of leave we are all taking this year, aren't we? Well, we did have Ash Wednesday and the first Sunday of Lent in our usual fashion. Uh, Palm Sunday, Holy Week, and even Easter Day will be unusual in their observance, to say the least. But we are not going to give up these holy times. And I do not want you, brothers and sisters, to give up hope or laughter, faith or joy, generosity or love or trust in Christ our Lord and in God's ability to see us through this time, this difficult time. Most of all, however, do not give up gratitude, for we are still very richly blessed. In our gospel lesson this morning, we have a situation not entirely different from what is happening to us right now. Someone has died, someone who is a close friend of Jesus. Jesus was alerted and asked to come early enough that he probably could have healed him, his friend Lazarus. But, but he delayed for a couple of days, and the question on everyone's heart who is gathered there is, where was Jesus while this was happening? Much as we often wonder to ourselves during a time of, of terrible trouble, where is God while this is happening to me? Now perhaps some were even thinking of that first verse of our psalm today. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. It may be that many there, including the disciples who were with Jesus through the, throughout the, uh, the, the delay, thought that um, it was about fear of being put to death himself. Notice that the disciples did not protest the actual delay. They only spoke up when Jesus said that it was now time to go to Judea again. And then their comment is, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? We have to be aware that Jesus deliberately walked into danger for the sake of others, so that Lazarus might live, yes, but even more so, that witnesses to this miracle might believe and understand that God is reaching out to save them. We can see courage in many ways similar to that of Jesus and his disciples as medical personnel, first responders, and other vital workers go to work during this crisis. And we see ourselves in Lazarus, Jesus' beloved friend. Now, Lazarus' name is a shortened form of Eleazar, which means God helps. God helps. He and his sisters are from the town of Bethany, which means house of affliction. And my brothers and sisters, are we not at this time living in towns which might be described as houses of affliction? Do we not, can we not trust that God helps and is helping us all, helping us this very moment? Will we then choose to be grateful for this help or will we not? Mary and Martha both believed in and trusted Jesus, but they were aware that he didn't always do things the way they preferred, or sometimes maybe didn't even do them the way he would have preferred himself. These sisters were connected also with the last two verses of Psalm 130. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. These sisters indeed waited for the Lord. And there was plenteous redemption, not only from the grief they were experiencing, but also from their separation from God, which is the very definition of sin. As Leonard Sweet has said in his collected sermons, in today's gospel, Jesus doesn't appear before Martha and Mary, who were in agony over the death of their brother Lazarus, just to bring them a casserole. Jesus doesn't cluck his tongue and concede that Lazarus' death is a tragedy. 
Jesus goes to his best friend's tomb and calls out, Lazarus, come forth. As experienced by Ezekiel and by the psalmist, once again, the animating spirit of God moves with power and precision and brings a dead man walking right out of his tomb. This is what God settles for. Miracle, rebirth, deliverance from the pit, and eternal redemption. God doesn't define winning as not losing. God doesn't settle for anything less than joy unbounded and glory-filled dreams fulfilled. My friends, many of us cannot engage in our usual work. God is at work on our behalf. Many of us have vital jobs that require we be at work, even at the risk of our own health and that of our families. God is at work right alongside us. In Christ, God is at work liberating humans from all the forces of imprisonment and oppression, not the least of which is death itself. Now, I wish I could tell you who said that last sentence. It's a quote but I can't locate the author at this time. But still, let me say it again and assure you that it is true. In Christ, God is at work liberating humans from all the forces of imprisonment and oppression, not the least of which is death itself. And we, even those of us who cannot work at their usual jobs, even those who are self-quarantined, even those who are very sick, we are invited into the work God is doing in Christ. What can we do, you may ask? We, we are little. We are helpless. We are terrified. Yes, all of that is true. And yet, we belong to God. We are God's beloved daughters and sons. We live in hope because of this, and we are granted the power of prayer for ourselves, for one another. Did you notice what Jesus did just before he called Lazarus out of the tomb? Were you listening? Did you notice this? We are told that Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. That's right. Jesus prayed. He gave thanks that the Father has already heard him. Now, do we think that the Father hears us any less than Jesus was heard? I tell you, and I tell you truly, we are heard. We are heard every bit as much as Jesus was and is heard. That's our superpower as children of the living God. Did you know we had a superpower? There is a beautiful prayer in which we offer ourselves to God for this work. The prayer is attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. Listen. Lord of your peace, where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Sisters, brothers, friends, let us join the work of God and be freed from our prisons of oppression and despair. Let us grasp and use our superpower, raising prayers mightily for ourselves, for one another, without fear, without impatience. And let us recognize those blessings we have received and continue to receive. Let us express our gratitude and feel our blessedness even in these days of pain and grief and fear that we might offer hope and trust and joy to all. Let us settle only for what God settles for, nothing less 
than joy unbounded and glory-filled dreams fulfilled. Amen. Amen. And now, if you are using um, a Book of Common Prayer, please turn to page 96, page 96, where we will find the Apostles' Creed. This is the great baptismal creed, and it is the creed that we use when we are not celebrating Eucharist, but it is also the creed that we say or that is said for us uh, when we are baptized and also when we bury those who have died. And let us say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, my friends, the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. And together, let us pray as our Lord Jesus has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And we are going to use suffrages A, which are found on page 397. And because I suspect many of you don't actually have this in front of you, I'm going to chant these for us. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you, and also with you, let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command, and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from night, 
and turns the shadow of death into the morning. Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, may we may when night comes rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. I'd like to invite your prayers at this time. Let us pray for those who govern us. Let us pray for those who rescue us, um, particularly first responders, doctors, nurses, and all the other workers in hospitals and clinics and uh, other places where health is being uh, dealt to those in, uh, who are able. We pray for those who are needed to work, those who are uh, in the process of manufacturing uh, the many things that are needed now, the uh, um, safety uh, equipment for uh, nurses and doctors and other and first responders and others, the um, the uh, ventilators that are needed for patients. Um, we pray for those who uh, provide and transport our fuel, our um, uh, our food, our um, various and sundry other things that we need. We give thanks for uh, clean water and uh, the means of, of receiving that, which also requires other people to work. We pray for those who are unable to work, who uh, have worked by the hour perhaps and are not being paid. Um, we pray for all of those in need, those who already didn't have uh, enough to get by on our suffering even more so now, I am sure. And therefore, we ask, Father, that you will help us to be the means through which uh, those who are in greatest need may receive more. We pray for um, those uh, who are making decisions for us and ask that they may make wise decisions in all things. We pray for um, those who have asked our prayers, including those we name now, Glenn, Hank, Nikki, Bob, Brian, Carlo, Martine and family, Violet, Caitlin, France, Keith, Sheila, Ruth, Caitlin, Donnie, Donald, Charlie, Joan, the Zavada family, Josephine, Carrie Lynn, Kanena, Chedu, Uche, the Amakekwe family, Mabel, Brian, Fran, Jeffrey, Jim, Florence, Donna, DaCosta, Jimmy, Joan, Gertie, Dolores, Katie, Marty, Angela, Charlotte, Max, Teresa, Alice, Susan, Josie, Turta, Bert, Warren, Charles, and Veronica. We pray for all our active duty military personnel, especially Wade. We pray for all those who are serving overseas or in places of unrest. Are there others that you wish to pray for? We also pray for those um, for those good things. Pray, pray in thanksgiving for those good things which we have received. 
most especially we pray for, uh, we give thanks for uh, love, our families. We give thanks for good weather so that we may be able to uh, uh, go outside and enjoy a little bit of time um, outside the confines of our homes without, uh, without endangering ourselves and our families. We thank you, Lord, for hearing us. We know that you always hear us. And we ask that we may always be aware of the blessings that we have in our lives. Are there other prayers of thanksgiving? We pray also for those who have died, um, those who have died of the coronavirus, those who have died of other uh, illnesses or who have simply come to the end of their lives. We pray for those mourning and grieving as were Mary and Martha in our stories today. We pray for all those who uh, need our prayers and who um, who are suffering at this time. And so we ask, Lord, that you will comfort their hearts, that you will gather them up, that you will bring them to a knowledge that you are with them, even in their sadness and in their trials. And we have a prayer that we often do for uh, St. Thomas's Church, and we are going to, I'm going to modify it now in such a way that it will be for both of our churches. And so let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for bringing us together to worship you in this place, in whatever place we may be. We give thanks for every member of these churches, those present and those absent. We ask you, Lord, to keep us together and strengthen our bond. Today, we lift up our churches to you. We come to you, Lord, with our weaknesses and our hopes, and we humbly ask you to show us the way to move our churches forward. We love our St. Thomas and our St. Elizabeth's churches. We love being with one another. Help us, Lord, to fill our places with your love and to fill all places with your love. Help us to be your voice in the community around us. Help us to be where people come to meet you. Help us to be, we ask you to be present with us every time we meet in this place or in any other place or online for worshiping, for fellowship, for meetings, and to be present with us when we go our own ways to spread your love and your word. Dear Lord, bless the congregation here present now and bless our St. Thomas Church and our St. Elizabeth Church. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Did you say amen nice and firmly? I like to hear that. Amen. Okay, good. Now, um, we have, uh, we, we are, have concluded our service, but um, I wish to give you a, a blessing. And I would normally do the, the Lenten blessing, but I don't have it before me. So, my friends, bow down before the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you uh, for being here with us. We thank you for your mercy upon us. We thank you for helping us in all that we do. We ask that we may always be aware of your presence with us. And we ask that we may be blessed in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.